Hi Warriors, it's Hannah here and welcome back for another video. My 10k celebration. Cheat day meals for a full 24 hours. Whilst I don't necessarily believe in cheat meals, there's definitely such a thing as fear foods and I asked you all to send in yours. For the full 24 hours today, I'll be eating these meals, enjoying them and celebrating this important milestone. I also asked you all what you wanted to see in terms of my celebration for reaching 10k and a lot of you asked me to make a 10k challenge. Well, here's the deal. I'm not particularly keen to make a 10k challenge, but I'm happy to proceed if and when this channel reaches 20,000 subscribers and this video reaches 10k likes. So get liking, get subscribing if you haven't yet. Let's go have some breakfast. Mornings are for yogurt and fruit, but not bananas. Oh no. Cake is for birthdays, maybe some other special occasions, but not any other time. Just then. I know it's quite common to associate foods with different times of the day because granola, for example, I think it lends itself perfectly for breakfast. But equally, if you fancy something at another time of the day, that should be allowed too. I know at the start of my eating disorder recovery, when I started allowing myself certain foods again, I would become freer with my food, but only within certain time frames. I was very obsessed about meal times and about what I could eat when. So not only is it important to challenge your fear foods, but to challenge them at different times of the day. To challenge them repeatedly to keep on top of them until they no longer define you, until they no longer control your life. So sweets only for dessert? I think not. Now they're breakfast with waffles and ice cream and biscoff and Nutella to celebrate 10k subscribers. Throughout this day, I'll also be challenging some other fears and some other cheat day meals that you guys sent in just to normalize eating them. Having them for one full day is not gonna make or break my health. And even if I have granola every single day, which I do, that's not a bad thing. It's called food freedom. And it's a whole lot better than eating disorder or diet culture. So challenge your fears, challenge them repeatedly and overcome them overcome the eating disorder and I promise you, life's a lot better on the other side. During my recovery, it was banana milkshake every single day. So banana, sugar and ice cream and lots of it. Breakfast is challenging quite a few fears. First off, waffles, multiple carbs in one meal, granola, a non-breakfast item for breakfast, so ice cream, all of the toppings, so it's got nuts, nut butter, biscoff, Nutella, the whole lot, and some liquid calories on the side. Starting my day off with a milkshake and dessert, basically. Cheers. Another challenge I wanted to face this morning was eating as soon as I woke up because that is a behaviour that a lot of people fear challenging as well and I definitely recommend you try it repeatedly, break that challenge, beat it. But waffles, they take a long time so instead I just got myself a massive plate and a drink. I'm gonna fill myself up because one, thumbnail goals and two, that in and of itself was a challenge too. Even if I don't get around to having a snack this morning, it's already 10 o'clock or so, even if I don't get around to having a snack this morning, I will have challenged eating a large meal first thing in the morning. And that's a great way to start the day.
special shout out to today's sponsor, Chef F's, for cooking all of my meals. <laughs> I've been working away and it's almost 12 and I realized it's probably time for a snack. I'm not particularly hungry, but you know what? That makes for a really good point. It's okay to eat even when you're not that hungry. Just because you're entertaining your audience, just because you're out with friends, or it's just a good time to eat. Sometimes you're a bit bored, whatever, and it's important not to feel guilty, even if you eat at those times. So for snack, I've got some wasabi coated peanuts, because pre-packaged snacks, salty snacks, fried snacks, nuts, these things all came up as fears. I'm gonna be eating them straight out the bag, because portion control was another thing that came up a lot. Time for some lunch? Losing time, I'm fading fast I just wanna make it last Try to let go of the past I close my eyes, embrace the blast Sleepless nights and headaches stack Restlessness to hell and back What's my purpose, what do I grab? A slippery surface, a heart attack And sometimes you just gotta believe There's something that'll give you relief There's something that'll have what you need what you need we're broken it's tragic we're not all elastic but maybe there's magic believe you could have it and i know of sadness the anxious and panic the infinite vastness of all that is blackness Are you eating your burger outside of your bun mm. Arnold, okay So, for lunch we challenged chips, or well, the Spanish version, patatas bravas, with calorific sauces, unknown calories in pre-processed mock meats, bread, double carbs, a solid portion, and probably quite a few other challenges. Granted, it's already 2.30, and I know during my eating disorder I would push meals back. Then, during my recovery, I felt like I needed to eat at certain times on the dot. Now it's freer, and it's the best of both worlds. Also, lately I've been recording just little bites here and there, and montaging it together because... aesthetic. I used to obviously record like a full sit-down meal, speed it up a bit, that whole jazz. So let me know what you think of this new editing style, or how you prefer to watch your videos. As you know by now, I am all for challenging your fear foods. Whatever, whenever, however much you want to and need you for your recovery. A lot of you mentioned that pastries and croissants were fear, and as I had waffles for breakfast, I'll be having that as a snack now. Anyway, back to the point of fear foods. It's really important to challenge them, to challenge them a lot, as much as possible. But I want to caveat that with push your comfort zone for not your boundaries. Your comfort zone is where you feel safe. And that might be, you know, a bubble created by the eating disorder. Your boundaries are points beyond which you may freak out and revert back to other behaviors that make you feel safe. So eating a croissant for breakfast might be possible for you now having it as a snack or having a chocolate croissant or putting something else on it or having it with a milkshake, blah de blah de blah. That may be beyond you at the moment. 
and if you do that you may take one step forward and two back and that's something we want to avoid we want to take step forwards without compensating as a result so challenge yourself take it as fast as you possibly can but still take it at your own speed it's your journey don't compare it with anyone else's and do what you can do this is literal heaven nowadays you also can't use being vegan as an excuse to shy away from pastries and fried foods and chocolates or anything else because you can get all of those things in the shops i promise you the joy i get from anything pastry beyond what the eating disorder could ever have even Today I'm celebrating 10,000 subscribers. I'm also celebrating my new coaching business, my food freedom and my love for food and for life and for spontaneity. Freedom means allowing myself waffles for breakfast and fried food for lunch, pizza for dinner. It means allowing myself chocolate at night time, but also during the day. It means eating more at some meals and maybe a little less at others. And it means treating myself to whatever I fancy. Just because. Or order pizza midweek even if all the shops are still open. All without judgement. And all without guilt. That is the key. And you know what? If I hadn't challenged myself constantly, every single day during my recovery, I don't think I would have got here. I don't think I would have had the freedom that I have today. And whilst I feared becoming absolutely addicted to these foods, having them over and over and over, actually the opposite happened. The foods that maybe I did crave initially no longer had such an appeal because I knew I could have them whenever and wherever and however much I wanted to. Initially they held a large appeal because I knew they were off limits and the beauty is they no longer were. So for a while, yes, I may have consumed quite a lot of chocolates, quite a lot of bananas, quite a lot of nut butter, because these were the things my body craved. After some time, my body realized that these items were no longer scarce and moved on. Cravings do pass and these fears too can go away, but you do have to put in the work. You have to listen to your body and even if you might not be craving these fear foods all of the time, I still recommend you integrate them and integrate them regularly, just so that when the situation does arrive, you're not afraid. You are fearless. The most voted dinner suggestion was, of course, pizza. What else? We made a couple of very large sourdough pizzas and devoured them. After that, I was pretty well stuffed. But after a little digestion pause, I got around to facing the last fear food of the day. Chocolate cake. My 10k chocolate cake. It was very sweet, I'm not gonna lie, but also absolutely friggin delicious. If I eat anything else today, I will let you know, but to be honest, I think that's me done. I might have a cup of tea, sit down, and not move anymore. If you appreciated my efforts, if you'd like to see that 10k challenge, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. 20,000 subscribers, 10,000 likes, and that video will be made. Love you all so much, besties. Thanks so much for all of your support reaching this impressive milestone. 
see you guys next week. <laughs>